Hello DevOps people, it's me, I'm back. What I thought would only be a summer break turned out to be much more. Uh, with events ranging from the really great to the truly terrible and um, in some life, as we call it. Um, but I'm back and I'm determined to um, do a regular live coding stream again and I'm happy to have you with me. As always, um, the chat is open. I'm happy to chat while I'm doing my stuff here for the next one and a half hours and uh, I'd love to chat with you about all the things that come to your mind about the stuff that I'm doing or projects that you are doing at the moment, questions you have, whatever is on your mind. Um, feel free to pop into the chat and uh, we'll see where it'll take us. So, um, since I had a lot of time to think, I actually came up with an idea that will probably make the stream a lot more consistent, which is I'm going to do a project that uh, is um, dedicated to this live stream. So um, today I'm going to start with a new project with a with an application that I'm going to build live here on Twitch. Um, and this project will be about infrastructure management. I think I've been thinking about this application for more than 20 years now. Um, an application that allows me to manage uh, all the servers and uh, cloud instances that uh, I have to work with um, and that simplifies uh, all these things um, and uh, yeah I thought it'll be a good project to do on the stream because uh, it'll be open source so I'll be able to publish the git rep repository um, you will see um, my progress over time, you'll see my issue queue, and um, we can even collaborate on the stream if you'd like to do your own pull requests and things like that. So um, the software that I'm going to build um, will have the name Jupiter for now. Jupiter is the Roman uh, god above all Roman gods, and uh, I think it's uh, pretty fitting um, to a system that will um, reign over all our servers. As you can see, the repository is still empty, and uh, I'm going to uh, start working on this today with thinking about a few things, um, writing down a few to-dos that we'll have to do uh, to start the project, uh, to, to kick off the project, and um, I actually don't know where it'll take us over the coming streaming time. All right. Mm. So, maybe I'll simply start by cloning the repository. Let me go to the projects folder. And clone this. Yes, I have cloned an empty repository. All right then. Um, so what I thought about um, in terms uh, of technology, I'm going to uh, build a uh, Ruby on Rails application that will be the management UI and API. And uh, I guess we'll have some additional modules later that need to run near to the servers themselves in the infrastructure so we might have agents on the servers or a central agent per cloud provider or something like that 
to collect data. Um, but uh, I guess it's a good thing to start with the central hub, so to say, and um, that is what Jupiter is going to be. So, um, let's start by creating uh, a few new issues that will basically be my to-do list and we can even um, group them into milestones. So uh, what I definitely need to do is... Um, how do I call this? Um, clone suspenders repository. I'm going to use Thoughtbots Suspenders repository as the base of the application. The company Thoughtbot um, is a great company in the US that uh, who specialize, among others, on uh, in um, Ruby on Rails and they've built a repository for Rails, for Rails application that already has a lot of um, uh, the core things that you'll need to have, like um, CI integration and things like that. We'll take a look at that later. So that's going to be a to-do. Mm. Is it an enhancement? Maybe I actually add a, simply a to do. Uh, that's too generic, isn't it? Let's let's call it an enhancement. It's necessary on the way to our application, isn't it? Okay. Then I'm going to set up a Travis CI integration so I can have CI. We'll do continuous integration via Travis CI. So this is another enhancement. And we'll deploy it on Kubernetes. So, set up Kubernetes deployment should be another enhancement. Of course, the goal is that uh, pushing to master triggers a continuous integration run and uh, if the tests and things are successful, then um, it'll get deployed automatically. We don't have to deploy um, by hand. We we'll probably um, use two environments. So the deployment to the staging environment will be automatic from CI, and then we'll have a manual deployment into production. But we'll see about that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Suspenders doesn't come with an authorization um, gem already built in. No, it does not. So, I'll give another ThoughtBot gem a try. Um, we can copy this URL to the issue to make it more clear. Uh, 
and then we can integrate um that's an interesting repository that I'll have to look at it at later uh we'll integrate how's it called clearance let's take a look look at clearance Extending sign in. We we'll probably need some kind of token authentication for the API. Uh, but I think that'll be possible with clearance in a way. Let's give it a try. Integrate clearance for authentication. By the way, I've added a few um, chat commands. So if you'd like to get the URL of uh, my project repository here, um, simply um, type exclamation mark project in chat and uh, you'll get the link. Um, that's that. What is Constable? Posting announcement and having discussions. Okay. It's built with Elixir. Okay. Yeah, if if I find the time to learn a new language, it'll probably be Elixir. Um it's uh it sounds really interesting. Okay. Um that's interesting, a docs batch. By inch CI. Interesting. Inch CI, what is this? Visibility of documentation in open source. Interesting. Well, we are going to need good documentation, aren't we? So, we have ourselves a new issue here. Integrate HCI. HCI. Looks like a great way to push us to better documentation. Impressed. 
Okay, um... And for local development, I'll need a few Docker containers to run the database and uh, if we need Redis and things like that. So, set up Docker dev environment. We'll need to have that right after we have some code. Docker to run our local to run our application and its dependencies locally. I think that's enough for a start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this repository. And since it'll be the base of our application, I'll add its URL as the upstream remote. I'll Create a branch starting with the issue number and a few helpful words. Then I'll do a git pull upstream master. That should give me. the whole repository. Okay. That was easy. However, uh, I won't be able to run it yet. We'll see. Um, so uh, ThoughtBot uses a, a nice convention, which is there's always a uh, setup script in the bin directory. So I can simply run bin setup and uh, it'll install the dependencies and stuff that I need. Um, they're using Ruby 251, which I obviously don't have installed. So let's go ahead and install it. Not found, okay. I think brew upgrade uh, yeah, does a brew update as well, so it'll probably do two updates, but uh, no matter. So anyway, how are you people out there? This microphone is working, isn't it?
There were times when brew update didn't take as much time. really seems to be hanging there. Oof, here we go. That's the brew upgrade now. It does another update. Next time I'll think before I blindly copy and paste. Ooh, I had a rebuild from February. Okay. Let's try setup again. It's still not installed. Okay. Oh, of course. But now I should be able to do RBL install 2.1. Okay. Okay, in the meantime, I can um, tell you a bit about the things I've done uh, since I did my last live stream, which was quite a while ago. I started a new website called Full Stack Sensei, and um, on there I'm going to blog about DevOps and SRE topics, and uh, it'll also host the the stream in the sense that I'm doing, uh, I'll post uh, recordings there and things like that. I've also created a new YouTube channel called Full Stack Sensei. Um, it's still empty, so this session will be the first recording that I'll put up there. And uh, so go ahead and uh, simply click the link and subscribe so you get the notification when new recordings are up. And uh, that way I have a more consistent uh, presence on the web, not only on Twitch, but also on YouTube and uh, on this website. Uh, and I guess the website will tie everything together. Okay. This is all taking too long. I need to buy a new computer. Eight cores or something like that. It'll speed this up, won't it? You can solve everything by throwing hardware at it. I'm kidding.
Well, at least my CPU seems to be working. Does it actually use all the cores? Hmm. I can't tell from this. Okay. Maybe I should. Use another visualization here. Yeah, it's working on all four cores. Interesting. Things I should have prepared beforehand, huh? So what are you guys doing in the DevOps space at the moment? Any interesting projects, things uh, you'd like to share? Simply post them to the chat. the local gem file already. Active support 4.2. Does suspender still use rights 4? should have started this in Tmux so I can do some other things while this is working. idea why these gems are getting installed. Probably because I have some RBN f plugin installed that works off a different list. Another version of Nakogiri. We already installed that 
previously. That's strange. Oh no, that's the documentation. Okay. As we have uh, been set up running successfully, I already can commit this and uh, push it to the GitHub. This is taking ages. <sighs> I even thought I had documentation disabled in my gem settings. This is annoying me. Anyway, I'm happy to have you all watching. I'm pretty happy to be back after my long hiatus. And I'm looking forward to doing some work online with my new Jupiter project. That way I will have a consistent and continuous project that I'm uh, working on on stream. I wasn't too happy with the way I did it before summer, um, where I simply picked stuff that I was working on all, uh, um, anyway, and um, because that often forced me to um, pick up uh, mid-work uh, on stream, um, so you didn't have any um, context on what I was working um, more often than not, I was working on private repositories that uh, um, you couldn't follow or uh, you couldn't take a look into. And uh, I think with my new open source project, it'll be much easier to uh, see what I was working. You can clone the repository, you can um, 
watch a recording of the stream and still see uh, things like pull requests and, and stuff. So um, you can um, look up what I actually changed during the stream and things like that. I think that'll be much more suited for the live coding um, approach. And uh, installing my gems will probably take two or three sessions. That'll probably keep us busy for, for weeks to come. I'm really not sure why this is taking so long. I don't have a, the the fastest machine on earth, but uh, installing gems shouldn't be a too shouldn't be too daunting of a task. Really strange. Fortunately, we'll only have to do it once. Let me take a look why it's installing these things in the... Okay, here we have a default gems. File. Okay. We don't need to get rid of that stuff. Bundle and get smart. Should be defaults, but nothing else, especially not Rails 4.2. That's probably from times in the past when I thought, okay, I, I'm, I'm doing so many Rails applications, it's good to have Rails 4 pre-installed, but uh, no, that's not how it works. Okay, that's the chef part now. Looks like it's running a bit faster. But it's actually also not necessary for this application. I guess I could simply stop this build. I'm going to let it finish. Looks fast enough. Tmux in this uh, project. Window 1 is always reserved for the editor. So I do it like this and uh, I create another window for shell stuff and uh, another window for running uh, long running stuff. So um, I'm going to do a bundle in. Oh, I know, it's uh, actually been set up. It's still not installed. Why is it not installed? It's not installed. What the F? Yeah, really. T 
taking the piss out of me, aren't you? Only because I cancelled this default stuff. I apologize, this shouldn't have happened, but uh, it'll get better. Okay, um... This is a gem, so... Did I get this right in the first place? Am I going to clone this? No, I'm not. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay, so I'll take a different approach. Just thought it's strange that this is a gem. My application shouldn't be configured as a gem. Right, only happy little accidents. Um, so we'll do the Ruby install in a different terminal, even though the font size is smaller. Um, it's just for installing 251, and we'll keep this running. And in the meantime, I'll remove my Jupyter project directory. be able to run suspenders I just update the gem running the Ruby version I'm currently using whatever that is like I think it's 242. Just do suspenders, Jupiter. Okay. Machine's really busy now. get something done. I promise.
Let's take a closer look at what suspenders will give us. We'll have bourbon and uh, not neat and bitters as our CSS framework. Delay job for background processing, that'll be more than enough, I guess, but uh, and we'll, it'll take us a while until we need something else like, uh, uh, can't even think of the name. The other well-known background processing gem. Then we'll have uh, high voltage for static pages, that's nice. Honey Badger for exception notification. Yeah, that's great because uh, I'm already using Honey Badger. We don't need Postgres. That's, that's obvious. Simple form Skylight. Never used it. Interesting. Puma as the web server, that's nice. Bundler audit, that's a good thing. I'd like to add Rails best practices and um, Breakman for testing as well. Rulebook up, of course. Yeah, we're going to be using Rulebook up for style tests, uh, Rails best practices to um, do nice readable code that it's is not vulnerable we'll use breakman to make sure our code isn't vulnerable and we will use bundler audit to make sure we are using the most current and secure gems spring all right there's been a new gem recently that could replace Spring. Uh, how, what's it called? Um, don't remember it either. But uh, Spring will do, I guess. Okay. So how are we doing? Oh, nice. And uh, now it only installed two new gems. That's much better than before. And so we can try suspenders again. And then we'll simply use this as our origin. Now we should be able to switch to Arbion Shell 2.1 and install suspenders there. I'm really grateful for your patience, by the way. It's not too exciting what I'm doing at the moment. It'll get better. I'll probably set up my Docker environment off stream because that's not too exciting either and could also take a while if things don't go according to plan.
Music's getting more excited too. Sort of you're getting dark car outside. Even though um, it's been really sunny today. We're enjoying quite nice weather in Ireland at the moment, at least here in the east. Yeah, this could take a while. That's probably the title of this session. At least we are installing Reds 5 now. Keeping my CPU busy. It's mostly OBS. Interesting. sure why the bot doesn't do some auto posts.
four. seems to be working, but doesn't do any auto posts. Well, it's not that important. That's another thing that's uh, interesting me. No document. Gems or gem? It's gem! Look at that. That's why it's installing documentation. I hope it'll be finished soon. Finally, suspenders, Jupiter. This should be quite quick because um, most of the gems will already be installed, I guess, I hope.
boot snap. That's the gem I was referring to earlier that replaces spring. Their own documentation might be out of date. It'll probably use boot snap instead of spring. Cool. That's going to fail. What I can do is um, copy the Docker Compose file from a different Rails project. Um, services quite quickly. However, I need to make sure they're not running in parallel. Um, PS, what's running at the moment? Yeah, I already have a Postgres container running here. This one down. Again, I forgot to run this stuff in a TMUX session. Installs here. Almost looks like it uh, updates the gem file step by step and then runs bundle install again and again. Let's take a look at bin setup. 
It's only just bundle install. Got the gem itself. Just generators for all the dependencies. So, for example, the form is generator. It then calls gem simple form and runs bundler. And after that, it use it'll do a configuration step. Creates an initializer. And then it runs uh, Rails generate simple form install. So it looks like it goes through all the generators and uh, installs everything step by step. It's probably a sensible approach. Here we go. We're done. Hooray. Um, Tmux. So that's that. Here's where my... because the project didn't exist yet. Here we go. Okay, that's that. Um, now let's take a look at the Docker Compose file. Mm, it'll build the app with a Docker file that I'll have to copy as well. We'll have a Redis running, which I'm not sure we'll need. Well, I'm going to use feature flags with rollout, so uh, rollout is based or uses uh, Redis, so we'll, we're going to need it. And um, and that's fine. So. I need a Docker file. The Docker file is uh, pretty simple. It simply uses uh, the uh, Ruby base image and installs a few things that are necessary for the for a Rails application. It'll then copy all the stuff into uh, the container image and uh, run bundle install. And uh, I guess we also should have a command here. to have uh, at least rack start or P uh, puma but uh, apparently this is already working not sure why but since it's coming from an existing working project i guess uh, it should be okay um and uh, I definitely need a docker ignore file. I
realized uh, recently that I forgot to have this in many projects and uh, it's really a necessary thing. Um, so, for example, that it doesn't copy your whole Git repository metadata into the Docker image. The same goes for .n files that might contain um, passwords or tokens or stuff that you don't want to push to a uh, docker image repository. So this should enable us to run docker compose. Up. Running the application in a Docker container as well um, is nice to have it um, isolated from from your development system, even though you'll uh, also need to have all your gems installed locally to run certain commands to generate source code and things like that. Uh, it also enables you to deploy the application as a Docker image, for example, like uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to um, deploy this application to a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, so I'll need a Docker image of the application anyway. And that way I can make sure the image I'm going to deploy is working. This will actually take a while um, for downloading the image, then, well, the copying will, will not take a lot of time, but then it'll have to run bundle install inside the container again. So, um, I'll probably do something in the meantime. For example, um, try and commit uh, the stuff that I have been working with. Uh, yeah, I can get remote and oh, no, that's not what I'm going to use, even though it would be quite fitting today. Uh, come on. Dot n shouldn't be in here. Why isn't it in git ignore? Dot n dot local. How does dot env work here? Does set up copy a an env file? No, it does not. Okay. However, it also doesn't come with a dot env file. So what's in the dot end file anyway? Mm, don't think that should be part of the repository. On the other hand, it looks like um, the forego gem then?
No, that's foreman in go. Not interested in that. Let's take a look at dot .env. Okay, so dot env seems to be the default here, and then I'll do my own stuff in dot env dot local. Okay, this makes sense because you can pre-populate dot env with uh, sensible stuff uh, and uh, dummy values, and then every developer has to overwrite it in his or hers uh, dot local. Okay. Fine with me. So we'll go ahead and uh, commit what we have. Bootstrapped with wire suspenders. Really mixing my sartorial metaphors here. Okay, so at least we have a repository now. I'll even do a tracking push. Here we go. That's done. Well, since time's already almost up, I think I'll, I'll, I'll make a break here. Uh, I'll have to find out why OBS is taxing my machine that much. Normally it doesn't. And um, I'll be back next Tuesday. And um, I'll work on the next issue. Uh, the first one can already be closed. Could have added this to the commit message. ID here. Eight E C seven. Okay, so next time I'll probably have a working Docker development environment and then uh, I'll also do the Travis CI integration so we have uh, our development pipeline running and then we'll see about clearance and uh, adding a few first tests and stuff like that. 
So next time will be more interesting than this time. I'm sorry for all the live plumbing and um, yeah, I'll hope to see you next Tuesday. Don't forget to uh, subscribe or uh, to follow the channel. You can subscribe as well. Um, I'll highly appreciate it. And um, I'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks a lot.